The Black Ops Cold War global launch is so close with New Zealand and Australia being able to jump in in just about 12 hours time or maybe less depending on when this video catches your eye. As a result, in those final moments before the launch of the game, Treyarch released a blog today detailing all the major changes since our last encounter with the game in the beta. So today we're going to be breaking down everything of importance that you need to know so that when you jump in, you're geared up and ready to go. That said, as we go along, let me know your thoughts down below. Are there any changes you are particularly pleased with? Maybe not so much. Anything maybe you were hoping to see change that isn't listed here at this, whatever it is, feel free to let me know. As well, if you are new to the channel, perhaps part of that nearly 64% of viewers not subscribed, do be sure to do so to stay up to date with all things Black Ops Cold War, as we have so much to talk about in the next coming days to weeks with double and triple uploads going live on the channel, starting tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 9 a.m. Eastern, and 2 p.m. in the UK, along with elsewhere in the world, depending on where your region is with some early hands-on guides, tips, and general looks at Black Ops Cold War's full game. Stick it here on the channel, you won't want to miss it. And finally, I don't really do this often, but I'd love to see how many of you guys are excited for Black Ops Cold War here. Drop a like if you are. Just for fun, let's see if we can cross 5,000 likes here. But anyways, let's talk about these changes coming at launch. Firstly, let's talk about the bigger things you probably care about, some more content changes, new actual additions to the game. Let's first talk about weaponry, the things you're going to be interacting with the absolute most within Black Ops Cold War. Detailed in this blog post are five new weapons and a plus more coming alongside that. So likely more than five weapons, but they took the time to detail five here. Those being the FFAR Assault Rifle, the Bullfrog SMG, the M60 LMG, the DMR-14 TAC Rifle, and the M79 Special Launcher. Now, what other ones there may be, we'll have to wait and see as time progresses. And again, we're very close to that, so shouldn't be waiting too long. As for weapon changes and tuning since the beta, though, that's something that follows perfectly here, I think, with this one. We saw actually a decent bit of adjustments made to weaponry. For the assault rifles, we saw general performance across all rifles to match closer to the Krig 6 and the XM4 based off of their dominance across the category in the beta. It also increased the recoil for the AK-47. Submachine guns saw a reduction in the effective damage range to counter the dominance of the class seen in the beta. LMGs had an increase to the damage output to improve the effectiveness of the class and also increased LMG ADS times. Sniper rifles had a decent bit of adjusting here with this as we saw adjusted aim assist to feel not only smoother but also require a little bit more skill and precision to accurately take advantage of that bonus. It also slightly increased the sniper ADS times and the scope glint will now display more regularly. Pistols saw a decrease to the burst fire hip fire accuracy and also reduction in that burst fire max damage range. Shotguns saw a reduction in the semi-auto shotgun fire rate. Launchers saw a slightly increased inner damage of launcher rockets to allow for lethal damage when placed precisely. And finally, melees saw a slight reduction in the sprinting speed with the knife equipped. We saw some additional weapon changes as well with more gunsmith attachments being added in naturally as you do from the beta to the full game we saw better attachment balancing across the board we'll see the ability to dual wield pistols added in once we jump in and also weapon levels for primaries were increased from level 40 to 55 again offering a little bit more of a fuller experience here for all of that in terms of some movement changes some fundamentals here at this one we saw a reduction in the slide length and also the slide speed there's also adjustments to the sprint to fire to be faster rather than comparing it to the slide to fire, whereas that was not the case in the beta. There also, in terms of other movement changes, was an increase to mantling speeds across the board, which is nice because I felt in the beta it definitely took a little while. If you're maybe trying to get out of a gunfight or an engagement rapidly, you got caught up on that mantle. Score streaks saw a little bit of an adjustment here in which we firstly saw new streaks added in. We have the combat bow, armor, care package, cruise missile, VTOL escort, and gunship added in, and we'll be able to play with those come the full launch of the game. There is no mention of that leaked harp or VSAT, which we saw a couple of weeks ago at this point, which is kind of a big bummer in my opinion to not have any sort of advanced uav streak that's one that i really don't understand why they didn't add that in as for tuning for streaks we saw quite a bit here at this one in which we saw the attack helicopter firstly adjusted on its own with an increased damage to make it a three hit kill rather than where it was as a five hit kill before so a significant buff meaning you're going to die twice as fast almost when that thing locks onto you the chopper gunner had a reduction in its overall time and damage so a bit of a nerf there as well. Score cost balancing was something of a topic of discussion in this blog post, though no actual details were given, just that the score costs were adjusted. 
Cooldowns also were mentioned to have some tuning here at this, in which, again, this is kind of vague. It says to add variation to cooldowns so as to reduce low-end streak spam, but also encourage other styles of play. So that one's a little strange in how that will work, but for right now, that's all we have to go with. It also changed some of the earn rate parameters, meaning that some score-based events have been tuned across all modes. And also when considering kill streaks, the reward bonuses for a 10 kill streak and 15 kill streaks have been increased to make those higher gun and kill streaks more rewarding. In game, spawns had some general adjustments across all modes, not just one or two here. When you consider combined arms, enemies and gunboats will now properly cancel spawns with their line of sight, whereas you could quite literally just sit on a turret and watch people spawn in combined arms. So especially on Armada, that was a big problem. Glad to see that fixed out. Perks have had some adjustments where Flak Jacket actually has a reduction on how much it reduces the damage done. That's reduced by 5%, still effective, but not as much as in the beta. And Paranoia updated the sound for when an enemy is aiming at you when you have the perk equipped. For equipment, we saw the Frag Grenade had an improved throwback speed. The Stim Shot equipment had a cooldown from 8 seconds to 11 seconds before you can use it again, which I think is big. That's definitely something that those three seconds can be crucial, and you're not going to be getting into gunfights where people can stim twice over before either winning or losing that gunfight. The decoy grenade had a reduction from 20 seconds down to 15 seconds, and then the decoy also will now play a static effect every few seconds, so that if you are listening for it, you can discern what is real and what is not. As for field upgrades, the only thing adjusted was the field mic in which it had the listening radius reduced by 10% and a cooldown increase from 3 minutes to 3 minutes and 30 seconds. As for other things before we talk about the overall finalization of new content added in, which are kind of just generals and things that are to be expected here with this, as for game modes added in since the beta, we'll see Search and Destroy, Free For All, Hardcore Team Deathmatch, Hardcore Domination, Hardcore Kill Confirmed, Hardcore Search and Destroy, and Hardcore Free For All all added in come the launch of the game. There are a bunch of changes to existing game modes as well, to which Fireteam Dirty Bomb was the subject to plenty of these changes. But to spare you guys some of the monotony of just the more boring changes and aspects here with it, I can leave the link down there in the description below to the full blog post. But in terms of the big key changes here for Fireteam Dirty Bomb, in terms of gameplay, we saw added ammo caches to both maps of Ruka and Alpine. There were added repel lines on Alpine so you can get up to some higher elevation areas. Players can now continue to sprint while equipping armor plates at the same time. And also there is an added ability to call for help when downed. In terms of loot, that's something where there is a radiation vest added into the loot pool. You can pull out of looted chests, and this vest will then prevent the wearer from taking radiation damage when inside a radiation zone. The combat bow, VTOL, escort, cruise missile, and gunship have all been added into the loot pool as well, with adjusted item spawn rates being adjusted accordingly. In terms of vehicles, we saw a reduction to the frequency of the hind spawn, and we'll see an adjustment to the timing of the frequency of the hind tank and FAV spawns. There are a handful of adjustments to the ping feature in which you'll have the ability to ping while downed, from vehicles, you can ping down teammates, field upgrades, thrown C4 explosives, and also now whenever you're free falling, there's a center dot that will make pinging a little easier so you know where you're pinging. There are a bunch of bug fixes also listed here at this, but the only one that I really hope for is that major lag that would happen about halfway through the game on the latter half in which it would drop down to unplayable levels of FPS loss. And that's not something that's hardware based, it was happening regardless of PS4, PC, Xbox, it was a more server side thing where everything became unplayable. As for VIP Escort, there were a few changes that were kind of just regular adjustments for when audio cues would happen, talking about Xfil and the actual Xfil sequence itself. And then combined arms, players will now be able to quick deploy whenever they can jump off of certain heights. So I'm imagining that cliffside on crossroads, you can actually just parachute down if you want to, which is pretty cool, I think. There's some mention of audio adjustments here with that one. Again, I'll leave it down there in the description below because it is very custom tailored in some regards. But outside of that, there are a couple of other major features added in that we're going to wrap up this video with. Firstly, of course, the military ranks 1 to 55 are going to be there for standard player progression. And then, of course, you can jump into that prestige after that. There are new challenges for campaign, multiplayer, and zombies coming with launch. Unlockable weapon camos, which I am incredibly excited to grind out. Hopefully, they look good here with this, given that we do have a pretty cool timing in terms of design that we can work with in the 80s. Player and weapon customization will now be available as well at launch. There's going to be a combat record at launch, 
Theater mode is going to be supported at launch, which I'm incredibly excited for. Love theater mode and not having to record every single game. There'll be multiplayer bot support, finishing move support, and finally, weapon inspect animation support. So quite a lot has changed since the beta, hopefully for the better here. So we'll get, of course, a better understanding once time progresses and we get a little more hands-on time. But we're just under a day now away from the first unlocks, depending on where you're at in the world for Black Ops Cold War. So that's where we're going to wrap it up. I would love to get your thoughts and feedback down in the comments comment section down below. Are you guys looking forward to anything in particular here at this one? Are you guys excited for Black Ops Cold War? Whatever it is, let me know your thoughts. But hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you drop a like down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe. So you don't miss a single thing. We're going to go all things Black Ops Cold War and Warzone as we go forward here into the next coming days and weeks. If you're interested, hit that subscribe button. If you also want to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram, those are the best places to get connected outside of YouTube. Frankly, live on both those. So if you guys want to strike up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, that link is down there in the description below. That said, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.